Hey guys, Botlane here with my first League of Legends video. Today I'm going to show you how to carry a rank game with Aatrox channel. First off, I'd like to talk a little bit about myself. My in-game name is PB Spotlight and I'm a 2100 ELO jungler. I'm not a native English speaker and I apologize for any mistakes in advance. This is my first time using LoL Replay as well, so if you have any advice for me to improve my videos, feel free to leave a comment down below the video. So in this gameplay, we had a 7000 gold disadvantage to our opponents and we had an AFK, but we still managed to win this game. I'm not only going to show you what I did right, but I also take a closer look on the beginning of the game and explain to you what I did wrong. As you already saw, I started at the red buff and went to go straight after that. I decided to go for the long jungling path since I called my top lane in chat that Lee would gank top at 3 minutes. And with the long jungling route, I am able to get to level 6 faster. But Jax didn't listen to my call and died to a gank. 4 minutes in, we are 1k behind already. At this point, I am trying to farm as good as I possibly can and look for ganks. Here I try to gank mid, but since Corky Valkyrie is away and Lee is there to counter gank, I have to back off. Since I failed to dodge Lee Sin's Sonic Wave, I get chunked down to 100 HP. And this is very crucial for the upcoming scene. I try to do Ghost, but Lee reads it perfectly. Even though I have my passive up, I only have 100 HP and don't want to fight Lee Sin one on one. Here is where I misplay. I try to go back in, since I thought Lee was doing Ghost, but he waited for me. Even though I have my passive up, Corgi is coming and gets the double kill. As you might have already noticed, I sped up the parts that are unnecessary for the gameplay. After I died, I picked up a second orange blade, shoes and a few parts and went off to farm again. Since there are no opportunities for me to gank right now, I try to farm up the best I can. You might also pay attention to mine and Lee Sin's farm. It's basically even right now, but look back at it in 10 minutes. After Lee Sin successfully ganks top, I thought he would go mid. I try to gank, but I fail, since Kassadin dies 1v1 against Corky before I can even get into the lane. At this point, I am just soaking up XP and CS on the lane. Since Kessel didn't respawn, I go to the red buff and pick that one up. After I picked up red, I am heading bot. I flash Q onto Lee and get the kill. Sona picks me up in return. I don't know if that was the right decision, since Sona has double buffs right now. But somehow I had to try something to get me ahead. After I died, I picked up a Vampiric Scepter, a Ward and a few pots. Nothing is really going on now, I just try to farm and donate blue to Cassidyn. Me and Kassadin are heading bot now, where the enemies just got a tower and a double kill. As you can see, Kassadin engages on Corky, and we get the shutdown. After that, we fight 2 vs 2 against Zona and Ezreal. I pick up Zona, but as soon as Lee comes in, I disengage. I don't know if I could have helped Kesselin there, but I decided to disengage since I didn't want to donate the double buffs to Lee Sin or Ezreal. I sense that the enemies are doing Drake, but I can't do much without any vision. As you already know, vision wins games. After I picked up wolves, I gank top. Zed tries to get away by going under his tower. But since my passive is up, I have no fear in tanking. I leave the kill to Jax to help him out of his 0-3 misery. As you can see on the minimap, Lee Sin is engaging onto Jax. I immediately try to help him. 
As you can see, I try to walk in front of Lee all the time. So I could block his sonic wave, which if it would hit, killed Jax. We both get out barely alive. And after all that, we leave with two kills. After Tarek and Wayne die bot, I head off to the bot lane. I engage on S just to get time for Tarek to get onto the lane. And with that, we got Sona Slash and Ignite. Here one of my favorite parts of the gameplay comes up. I still have my passive up and go on to S. Even though I fell into my passive, I have earned enough time for Wayne to get back on the lane. And with the sacrifice of my passive, Wayne is able to get the kill on S. Now I just pick up the rep buff and farm a bit. Even though I pinged and I knew that the 3 man dive on top would happen, Jax didn't back off. Even though Jax died, me and Kessadin are heading top to try and make something happen. We get into a fight versus Zed, Lee and Koki. Because Lee and Zed are low, we have a chance to win this fight. In fact the 3v2 ended up into 3 kills for us and 1 kill for them. Because of the Bilgewater Cutlass combined with my ultimate, they didn't stand a chance. After that small victory, I went onto the top lane and pushed the tower, in order to get a global gold for my team. After I donated blue buff to Kassadin, picked up wolves and ghosts, look at the CS numbers. I have a 26 CS advantage on to Lee Sin. Even though I'm ahead on Lee Sin in terms of CS and kills, my team is significantly behind. That's what gives the enemy the power to push our mid lane. Because S and Corky are pretty fat at this point, they can just poke us out of the lane. Because we received too much poke, we have to go back to the fountain. But here is the turning point of the game. They dived the inhibitor turret at 17 minutes. Even though they got Jax and Tarek, Vayne, Cassidin and me can clean up the kills, resulting into a 2 for 5 and an ace for our team. After the failed attempt of diving us, me and Wayne pushed the mid lane tower. Before the fight, we were 6k down, but now it's back to a 3k disadvantage. Here, I decided against doing Drake since I was low and I thought the enemies would come and take it. After they picked up Drake, they went onto the bot lane and tried to push our second turret. Because they picked Jax earlier, they thought they would be stronger and they made the mistakes of diving us again, resulting into a 4 for 0 for our team. After I failed to chase Corky, I went to the wolves and stole them. And here is where we get an AFK. After that, I just thought we should push the waves up and wait for him to return. But my team had other plans. They were able to get the kill on S and I came down to secure the kill on Sona. Because of Corky's movement in mid, I thought they would do a 3 man baron, and I went and checked it. At the time I arrived at baron, they were already so low that they had to disengage. I was able to pick up Zed, and after a little chase, my team picked up Corky as well. In addition to that, I was able to pick up baron. After all the mistakes they've made, and right decisions my team made, this sealed the deal. Even though we only were 4.
After the Baron, we just pushed up mid and got the tower. Wayne and Cassidy fought bot. Me and Jax came down there and won the fight. After all that, we picked up an ace and were able to get the bot inhibitor and also push the middle inhibitor turret. Since our minions pushed top, I decided to get the second top tower as well. Please keep in mind that we were only 4 members in the last couple of minutes and without our great decision making there wouldn't have been any chance for us to get back in the game. Since we are so far ahead right now, Kesselin and Wayne picked up 2 kills in mid lane. I pushed up as well and got another one. Somehow Zed was still hanging around there and I chased him down for the kill. Remember when it was 1 and 2 at the beginning of the game? Well now it's 12 and 2. Well this was a great example on how you can turn a game around with good decision making and capitalizing on the mistakes of your opponents. We finished off the game as 4 and my end score was 16, 2 and 18. But low replay didn't want to record it somehow. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned one or two things. I have more League of Legends videos to come, including an Aatrox channel guide. And as you have seen in this video, don't forget, never give up.